Hey everyone, it's Laura here, and I'd like to thank you for a popping by and seeing what I'm getting up to today. And that is to run through the tools and materials that I use to make these really great chicken wire garden art sculptures. Now, if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you've been here for a while, I thank you very much and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you do get the notifications when I come up with new projects to share with you. So let's get going as I show you the tools that I use to make these chicken wire garden art sculptures. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to run you through the tools and the materials that I use for my chicken wire art pieces. And this is a new one. This is just some little pumpkins that uh, I made as autumn is creeping up on us. And these will do beautifully for Halloween and for Thanksgiving. And I just love autumn and, uh, and pumpkins in general. So to start off with, it's always a great idea to have some safety glasses and these ones are awesome. They work particularly well for me because I do wear glasses and these fit over top but there's a plethora of styles and varieties and price points for goggles so just uh, find what works best for you and then gloves of course and these ones are pretty good because they're they're leather palm on them um, the fabric does snag on the wire periodically but uh, these are these are quite good they're a garden glove and <laughs> I thought I would show you these just for kicks and giggles um, as these are <laughs> some of my favorite gloves and I haven't been able to find them so I had my husband help me out and we just duct taped <laughs> the fingers to try and prolong their life a little bit uh, kind of pitiful though <laughs> but I thought I would show you of a necessity sometimes you just <laughs> you just gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> all right so I use a variety of snips when I'm doing this as well and these are tin snips um, they also could be called linesman's snips um, they're pretty heavy duty my hands get quite fatigued using these because they are so big and it's quite a um, quite a strong spring on them but when I'm you know I'm having to cut uh, you know heavier gauge wire then you know these are really quite good and then I have just some smaller ones and these are these are wonderful for getting into um, smaller areas and doing some fine trimming they're they're quite nice and then these ones here which fit fit my hands quite nicely once again they're kind of stiff and these ones don't have a spring in them so you know you do have to work a little bit harder so it's a very individual thing it's very much what you feel most comfortable using but really good idea to have a variety on hand just for those different tasks and then I use a couple of different screwdrivers and I do have one that has uh, you know like a, a sharper point on it it's almost like an ice pick kind of idea but it's always good to have some of these around as well and then the pliers well well <laughs> I have a lot so I have everything from two different sizes of the pointy nose pliers 
and these are really great for hooking that wire or getting in deep and pulling wire out or, or um, pushing it wherever it is that you want it to be. So those are very important. And then these are similar. These are a jewelry plier, however, and, uh, and these are really nice for getting hooks on your wire as well. As are these. So those three are jewelry pliers there, and they don't have to be expensive, they don't have to be pricey. Here we have a chain nose plier as well, and then these are just your standard wire cutters, and those get used in conjunction with all of those. So that's the pliers and the snips there for you. And there's a few other things that I use as well. So a rubber mallet, which is awesome. And there's a little bit of therapy <laughs> involved in, in using this, banging things around. Um, but yeah, a hammer, a hammer is pretty important as well. And then things like a pencil, and that's what I use to make, you know, the curly cues on the pumpkin. And then I just have a assortment of things that I use to make shapes. So something like this could be used to um, wrap wire on to make hair, uh, for instance, for a, a human figure or an animal, such as a horse. And then this here is a roughed out scoop and it's got two rounded ends so it's not actually the scoop part isn't actually um, turned and, and my husband is a woodworker so these are just rough projects that he had kicking around that I kind of absconded with <laughs> and then asked later. You know how that goes sometimes and this one would have been a vase but anyway it's it's actually really cool to use what you find around you and see what what comes of it now many many of my projects are spray painted so i use a respirator and this is huge guys you want to protect your lungs and uh, you know having a really good one where you where you replace the filters and do so replace those filters on a regular basis and then you know there's a there's a wide variety of, of paints that you can use and uh, there's a couple of other brands that I really quite like they tend to be um, a little more low odor and uh, then our wire just bear with me here I have a couple of different, couple of different ones, and this is on a huge roll. This is, uh, I believe, a hundred feet on this, and this is galvanized steel wire. So there's one, and then I have this one here, which is a heavier gauge galvanized steel wire and because that wire is just so sharp and so pointy on the ends I make sure that I have on a really nice sturdy apron as well and as you can see I'm wearing long sleeves and I never ever ever wear long sleeves and I work through my uh, garage studio so it can get a little bit cool here in the winter so just crank up the heat <laughs> if that's if that's the case so and then you know also make sure that you have um, a really good uh, shop broom sorry about that really good shop broom and a dustpan and just clean up those bits and pieces on a on a regular basis so then you avoid poking yourself and unfortunately sometimes accidents do happen and you need band-aids so make sure you have a first aid kit available to use as well so those are the tools of my trade I hope that gave you a clear peek into some of the implements that I use 
while making these super cute garden art sculptures. So thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button as well as the bell so you get the notifications when I have new projects to show you guys. And leave me your comments because man do I love hearing from you guys. You're absolutely awesome. And if you have any suggestions uh, for any critters that you would like to see or you'd like to see me elaborate on this process, then definitely let me know that as well. So for now, I am Laura, and I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you soon.